pretty much every episode ends with you walking into a room, the door closing, and you just hear... Hi, Gene. Oh, what a disaster. I don't know. And then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my life. You know? <laughs> We're now going to say good morning to our guest. It's pronounced Gunter. I know that. It's Gunter Steiner. Good morning, Gunter. Hey. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <clears throat> it's lovely to meet you. It's nice to meet you guys. Well, yeah. I know you're a big fan of my work. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know that? Yeah, well, just because everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world, you know, the whole world. We get used to it. What? <laughs> That's fine. What a crazy life that you have. What a crazy, crazy life. So, your, uh, your story is, fascinates me. Uh, obviously, your, your, your engineering background led you into Formula One, and then... I imagine, just from watching and being a fan, when you're in Formula One, it can it takes over your entire life. Correct, absolutely. I mean, that's the uh, when you are at that level in Formula One, it all goes around what, what you're doing because you are uh, uh, either uh, flying around, traveling around, and, and when you're at the racetrack, it's just like go go go. It's uh, something. It's very intense, and that's for I always say. This is not the job you can do. You need to want to do. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not doing a good job. This this is like a mission, you know. This is like a mission in life, and you do it, and uh, you need to enjoy it. Otherwise, it's not possible to do just as a job. And and the highs and the lows of that job are incredible. And now, obviously, with with try to survive, which has been the show. I always think, by the way, people who love Formula One love Drive to Survive, but people who work in Formula One hate the show. I don't know because I didn't watch it. Oh, you've never? <laughs> no, 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 I've really uh, not uh, seen any of it. Oh, you're no, in it. In you're in it loads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people tell me, and I, I know how I am, so I know what, what I am in, but the rest I don't know, you know. They <laughs> tell me, but uh, no, I, 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 I never watched it, uh, and I have no intention to watch it. Right. It's good. It's good, but uh, f for my side, it's a little bit like this. <clears throat> when it came out, obviously people had an opinion about it, what yeah. I do in there, and I hadn't seen it at the time. Right. So I was like, if I watch it now, because... I knew what I did, so obviously, you know, if I watch myself, first of all, then I have to start to debate with people what I do and is it good, is it bad, and I don't want to be there. And to start off, I don't like to watch myself on mm -hmm. TV. I hate it. Uh, and, and then the other thing is, an actor needs to watch himself to get better next time. Mm -hmm. It's pretty normal, but I'm not an actor. Yeah. So if I watch myself and think, oh, that wasn't good, I need to do it uh, different next time. So when I see a camera, all of yeah. a sudden I start to act. You'll be a bit self-conscious. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the worst bit is, then when I do it the second time, I don't remember what I did the first time. So you get about a hundred different gunpowder. <laughs> well, I'll, let me let me try and see if I can sum up the whole of Drive to Survive every season so far. Um, uh, Danny Rick is very likable, right? And and he everybody likes him. Um, some of the team principals are quite serious. Uh, you're amazing, and I think every episode ends with pretty much every episode ends with you walking into a room, the door closing, and you just hear, "Hi, Gene. Oh, what a disaster! I don't know." And then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my life. You know? that, 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 that were some of my years, as you said. The, the highs and lows are, are, are big, and the lows sometimes yeah. were long for us. Oh, mm. I, I, listen, I, I I can only imagine. So. How did it begin? How did you to tell us your backstory briefly of how you got to uh, the for the world of Formula One? Uh, I, I was working rallying. You know, I lived in England. Was working rallying, and then uh, I, I got once a telephone call from the assistant of Nicky Lauda. You know, the, mm. the former world yeah. champion, which passed away unfortunately five years ago. And I didn't know Nicky, but Nicky was like a little bit of my childhood hero. You know, because he was in the seventies winning championships. And she just called me up and said, uh, Mr. Lauda would like to speak with you. And I said, sure, I speak with Nicky Lauda, you know. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, yeah, well, why not? You know, it's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, he called me up and then we agreed to meet up in uh, in Vienna for dinner. And uh, we had dinner. Uh, we chatted for two hours, which was very long for Nicky Lauda. He had a uh, very short uh, attention span. And then I, I went back to the hotel, but nothing happened that evening. And then the next morning, he just called me up. And said thanks, thanks for the evening, uh, Mr. Stein. At the, at the time, we were Mr. and Mr. Uh, you're going to work for me. And I was like, okay, Mr. Lauda, what I'm going to do for you? And he said, I don't know yet. I will tell you later. And no, that, that that is how I ended up in Formula One the wow. first time around. <laughs> that was in the early 2000s, you know. And I worked for Jaguar then because uh, and Nicky was the 
uh, the CEO of Jaguar Racing and uh, team principal at the time, and I ended up to be the general manager. That was my way into F1. And did you <laughs> say, I'm always really interested with, uh, with people who get a, a job like that, Do you sit there and go, oh, well, well, but what does the job entail? What, like, do I, or did you think, yeah, okay, I can do that? Or was it a case of, well, if, if Nick Lauder asked me to do it, yeah. I'm saying yes, end of story, I'm going. No, uh, because I was in motorsport already a long time. I was like, yeah, I, I roughly know what to do. It's, okay. it's, it's not rallying, but it's still a racing cars. And at the time I did them already 20 years, you know, so it was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, you know, and that, that was it. Mm, wow. Pretty simple, easy. You can do it. Basically anyone can, can do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. can do it, you know. And you were, so you were at Jaguar for, what, a couple of years, a couple of seasons? Uh, uh, one season. One, just yeah. one season. season yeah. And then uh, Nicky left and I left with him as well. And then I came back to Formula One. I, I did uh, two years in DTM, German touring cars. Nice. And then I came back when Red Bull bought Jaguar. I came back, uh, Mr. Mateschitz called me up and said if I wanted uh, to come back in. And uh, I did so. So I worked one and a half years for Red Bull Racing. It was the beginning of it. Wow. Uh, and, uh, Is that still going now, Red Bull Racing? Are they still... Uh, I, I don't know. The, okay. I think they're around. I think they had a few good seasons. Now, okay. it's, wow. now it's just a medium season. <laughs> <laughs> they're very lucky, aren't they? Very lucky team. It's, I think they're pretty good. <laughs> and then, so obviously, the, the, the last few years, you were you were a team principal at, at Haas. You're the former team principal of Haas, which is... A, 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 it, for those of the people who don't, know about Formula One. Can you explain the differences between the teams? Because not all the teams are equal when it comes to staff and, more importantly, money. Um, so how does it work with a team like Haas, let's say, and a team like Ferrari? Um, basically, Haas is the newest team. It's 10 years old, but it's still the newest team. It's the last one which got into it. And it operates uh, on a... Uh, basically, Haas has got about 200 people while Mercedes, uh, Ferrari, Red Bull, they've got about 800. Even if there's a budget cap now, there is still a difference. Uh, you're limited to how much you spend. And almost all the teams are at the limit of their budget cap. Maybe some are 10 millions below. It sounds a big number, 10 million, but in F1 it's not a big number, 10 right. million, you know. So, uh, But, but uh, the history of the big teams, you know, is just uh, uh, so much different. They've got so much more uh, experience. They've got so much more data. Their infrastructure is so much bigger. It's just so much uh, more evolved than uh, the big teams. So that's for the small teams get always beaten. And the big teams, what they have to their advantage is they have got uh, uh, their own engine. They're an engine manufacturer, while the small teams, they go and buy the engine. So mm. having your own engine, it is an advantage in F1. And the money that it would cost to like let's let's say you and i wanted to start a team a brand new team you have to pay for it because i haven't got money, you know? <laughs> don't ask me for anything you know what would what would we need money wise to get a team hundreds going? of hundreds of millions hundreds, hundreds of, of millions, millions. Wow, is yeah, it? hundreds of millions you need i mean yeah at least half a billion you, uh, to get going you need otherwise you cannot get started okay i'm out I, you, I, I told you from the beginning, I don't even want to know about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Now, the thing with Formula One, I always think as well, it's, it's, it's like a bit of a drug, I would imagine, if you're in that world. So now you are a big celebrity flying around the world, telling your stories. But it, it, but it is great. It's, it's, it's great. Like uh, currently, uh, Gunter is doing an evening with Gunter. So last night you were in uh, Warwick, in Coventry. And then you've got a night off tonight. And then you are off to Southampton and then Guildford and then Edinburgh, although it's Scotland and Newcastle and lovely. And then next April, Gunter comes back again to do the unfiltered tour. Yeah. And you are you are playing every... Have, yeah. Do you not love your family yeah. anymore? <laughs> exactly. When I see this one, I, I'm scared. Uh, you know, I'm scared seeing that paper. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm doing that one. But uh, in the moment, it's, it's it's very successful. The tour, we, we, we sell out, uh, I would say, 90% of the theatres, which is pretty cool and wow. people like it. So, mm. you know, uh, we come back uh, and do more next year. But it's great. It's great for the Formula One fans, which is why, uh, you know, like for Dominic... Hmm. Dominic got into Formula One 
from watching Drive to Survive. It made him want to watch. Yeah. And I used to watch a bit of it back in the day with sort of Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher and stuff. But yeah, so I've seen you on Drive to Survive. So I'm... Now, Chris has been giddy all morning, you've yeah. been, haven't you? Because, you well, know, it's your favourite... Hi, Gene! It's I've your been favorite, that all day. It's your favourite TV Gene. show. <laughs> He's asleep now. He's asleep now. He's in California. I imagine you get spotted when you're walking around and stuff, do you? And that's that's obviously from that show. Yeah, absolutely. That's then, weird for you, isn't it? I would have thought. In the beginning, it was very weird, you know, because I'm mm. not used to it. Uh, I, 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 I never did this to to get this uh, no. not, notoriety, you know, but now it's weird, but it's part of it and you just get used to it. It's one of these things in life. You, yeah. you just have to deal with it, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, Gunter, um, uh, he wrote a book called Unfiltered, uh, which you can get, and that proved hugely popular mm. because of Gunter's knowledge of, of Formula One and, and engineering and also the fact that you, you tell a very good story. Um and, you, and also, you come across, as, as a lot of people in Formula One do, it's it's a very strange sport to me. Everybody um, everybody seems quite genuine from the outside looking in. Everybody's all rooting for the same thing. There's some people seem nicer than others. There seem to be some, some baddies in the sport. Boo! It's like a panto. Do you know what a panto is? Do you, do you know what that theatre no, no, show is? No, no, no. So you have heroes and villains. Okay. Mm. Some would say Christian Horner is a hero. Some would say he's a villain. Yes, you know? yeah, so, but yeah. Big, big personalities. But it seems to me that most people in the Formula One world actually get on with each other. Yeah, yeah, normally you get on because it, it, it's a... You know, it's a it's a circus, a family which travels around uh, uh, 24 weekends a year, which is a lot. There is mm. thousands of people. So, uh, you know, obviously there is people you like better, people you like less, but there is, uh, I think that you really have uh, issues with people. It's not happening because it cannot happen. It's like just normal life, you know, like living in a village, which is traveling around the world. It's the same thing, you know. Yeah. Some of the guys you like better, some of them you're a little bit more indifferent to. Who are your favourites? Give us some of your favourite people in the world of Formula One. I would say my favourites are uh, Mattia Binotto, Fred Vasseur and Toto, Toto Wolf. They are mm. my favourites. I mean, I get on also with Christian, uh, but uh, with them I'm normally in contact as well, outside of racing. It just fascinates me. Mm. It fascinates me. And it really does. And, and we, um, we had Sebastian Vettel on the show. Fernando and Oscar, didn't we? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll come to them in a minute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and Sebastian, I was saying to him, it looks like a great job. It looks like a great life. However, I see the work that the drivers have to do. You know, like at Silverstone, it's not unusual. Well, I saw them. The, the drivers on the back of a truck waving as they mm. get driven around. The, like the, You don't see players, do they? They don't drive football players around the car park no. waving at people parking the car. No. It's a very unusual sport. And he said, most of my life is travelling. He said, a tiny amount of my life is actually racing the car. It's a tiny part of my job. Uh, absolutely, and what went very right is like uh, uh, you, you don't see a tennis player, for example, before a, a, a game no. going out there saying hello to the fans and now no, no. they're sitting in there and focusing. That yeah. is very, they, they are very in demand, these drivers, because obviously, I, I guess it comes from people think they're just driving a car. Yeah, so, yes. you know, but yeah. they are athletes in the end. Mm. They need to be fit. They need to be focused. But I think they are also trained from when they come up to the to the lower series to do this, so they can do it. Otherwise, an athlete couldn't do this mm. because before you need to perform, you need to focus. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, they, they are there. Uh, national anthem into a racing car. Off you go, racing yeah. at uh, the, uh, the 360 kph. Mm. What a, what a life. That's it's quick. crazy. It's very fast. When you look at McLaren, especially in the last couple of months, they seem to have just flown up. And you know that's because of us, right? I, I didn't know that, no, but yeah. now I know. I've been telling everybody. Yeah, no, it's I, entirely I, I, due yeah. to us. Yeah. They so came, what did you do with them? They came into the studio, the two drivers, uh, uh, Oscar and Lando, they sat right there. It was just before Silverstone this year. Yeah. And since they came into the show... Mm. Boom. It's like literally, yeah. it's it's worked like that, yeah. It's so, so, Yeah. So, so what is going to happen with me when I go out? You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. They are, they're going to pull you back yeah. into the world of Formula I don't one. want to. <laughs> you're, you're, oh, you ain't out. You ain't out. No, 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 I'm not out. You'll no. be back. No, yeah. But, you, you, and, you and Sebastian Vettel will be both be back, back yeah. within two seasons, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I might come back here, you know. <laughs> to be fair, well, look at this tour. You don't have time to go back to... This makes Formula One look mm. like a part-time uh, job. Exactly, yeah. You're right on that one, you know. And don't keep... Don't keep Showing me this. Oh, sorry. Look, 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 this is where you. you're playing. I don't want to see this. Yeah. Um, if you want to go and see uh, Gunter uh, on his tour, so uh, you'll be hard pushed to go and see him this November because I believe it's pretty much all sold out. But mm. you could try anyway. But then certainly for the unfiltered tour, which is next year, and that is Cambridge, Croydon, Kendall, Harrogate, Hull, Bradford, Bath, St Albans, London, Scotland, Liverpool, Isle of Man. Oh my lord. What? I'm leaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, a lot. Then uh, ATG tickets or check the venue website. Just have a little look. Just Google Gunter and you'll be able to see uh, all the different places that he will be going. So, man, you are busy. When is your time? Have you got Christmas Day off at least? Yeah, I got Christmas Day and uh, uh, yeah, that's and Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that was nice of them, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> all right, let me very quickly look at some questions. Um, mm. I saw Gunter last night at Warwick Uni. Excellent show. He had the whole audience laughing for two hours, oh, says nice. Colin. Look at that. Thank you, Colin. Has Gene come to see the show yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, we cannot get the ticket. He's, right. too, he's too cheap to buy one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gene. Uh, I saw Guns on Tuesday in Nottingham. It's a brilliant night. Hi. I work for Haas UK. Can you please wish Gunter all the best from us here, says Andy. Thank you, Andy. I know Andy. And then I've, I just want to read you this because I think this is a lovely text message. This comes from a guy called John. And he says, Gunter is a legend. He let me show my old dad around the Jaguar Formula One factory when I left to move to Australia 22 years ago when private tours were not allowed. After 16 years in F1, it was brilliant of him to allow me to do that. Thank you, Gunter. Look at you, yeah. you rule breaker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've done that a few times. So. Well, yeah, yeah I'd yeah, imagine. Yeah. Um, listen, really lovely to see you. Uh, come back anytime you like. Uh, I know the, the people who love F1 mm. definitely need to go and see this tour. Definitely go and see him and get some tickets. Thank you for coming in to see us. You can now go home and get some sleep. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having tonight. me. You yeah, are welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gunter Steiner. Yeah. Radio X.